another edition of Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to uh, do a guide based on collimating a laser collimator. Now for you guys who are totally unaware of uh, what is a laser collimator, it's a special device that you use to collimate uh, a Newtonian reflector and basically what that laser is used for is you're going to use it in conjunction with the telescope and basically you adjust the, the main mirror and the flat together evenly so that once it's pr the telescope is properly aligned it means that you are going to get your uh, the light grasp adjusted and if it's misaligned what will happen is that the images that you're looking at uh, the telescope won't perform as it should so basically if they're misaligned, uh, you might not get a crisp, clear image. So this is the reason why we use a laser collimator. Now there are many, many methods that you can use um, to collimate your mirrors. You, uh, a lot of people are very um, that, that actually align the, uh, the reflectors with a Cheshire eyepiece, which is basically a little eyepiece with a reticle in there that you look through and you can adjust the mirrors that way. Now I'm not going to go too much in depth of how to collimate a Newtonian, you just refer that to the other guides that I've done in the past years. Um, obviously you can look at that through Astronomy for Beginners forum or you can look that at uh, my YouTube channel. Um, at the moment um, a laser collimator, you'll be thinking well here's a laser collimator, you'll be thinking why do I need to adjust a laser collimator? Now, believe it or not, I've had this for two years, and um, from time to time, the collimation is basically like an, an LED diode in the middle here. And what happens is, um, during that time, like a Newtonian, this will go out of collimation. Right? And the problem is, though, once this is misaligned, no matter how much you try to uh, uh, use the uh, laser, your optics would be misaligned regardless. So today on this guide I'm going to demonstrate you to you how to collimate a laser collimator, what to check for and how to uh, achieve such a task. Now it's not that complicated believe it or not and there's a lot of guys don't really like laser collimators because of this. Now you get some brand new out of the box and they're Apparently they work straight out of the box, but not all of them. All right, some might need adjustment, but it is relatively easy to do. All right, and they are not. Once this is aligned, it will last. The collimation on the laser will last a time, uh, a long time. But you do need to check prior before you even collimate your Newtonian. Is double check see if the laser collimation is set. Now, also you using laser collimation uh, again refer to some of my guides which I use this uh, device. Now I don't use a Cheshire eyepiece. Uh, to be honest with you I like laser collimators. Uh, okay they're a little bit more money but I think because they're so easy to use compared to a Cheshire eyepiece. To be honest with you I love laser collimators. It's, you know they're worth the weight in gold and you can get collimation in your new tone in literally not you know only a couple of minutes. That's how easy it is. So today also I'm going to show you now um, certain materials you're going to use to uh, obviously check in your laser collimator. Right there everyone, before I go into depth, all you're going to need, the tools you're going to need, is I'm going to highlight uh, a, the laser collimator in a little bit detail. Alright, um, very basic design, fits 1.25 inch um, focus, uh, focuses and um, you know, you've got your you got your bullseye target there. That is basically where the laser emits from. All right, this laser beam. Now, this is an Antares um, laser collimator. It's um, very handy. It has a variable uh, brightness adjustment and on an on-off switch. Um, the one thing bad about this laser collimator is, as you can see here, these are the holes. Now, these holes are housing a um, like screws um, very fine small hexagon screw screws 
right that you can only fit an allen key into them all right these are the screws that you will need to adjust the the led in the middle all right and basically that's how it works you centralize these screws to the adjustment for the laser to emit all right so you want a straight beam all the way across all right and that's what the problem lies is these screws do work loose during time which is completely normal but that's how it works now when you first buy an Antares laser collimator um, this these are usually coated with these like plastic coating caps that are really are a nightmare to get out all right because you think to yourself well that's a sealed unit what it is but the main problem is though the screws do actually come loose from the inside as you can see I don't know if you can see that you can see the screw there but uh, the, you have to prise off the plastic caps to get access which is a bit annoying it's a bit of a, a bit of an uh, awkward design to us here and, and really you should be able to align the, ca um, the, the screws without having to take off the caps all right now that's the reason why they do lose adjustment and you have to you have to check it periodically I'm afraid all right but however uh, it's very easy to uh, do all right you can do this yourself it's that easy and what I'm going to do is I'm going to now show you uh, a, a way you can adjust it now the main purpose is you've got to try and adjust it so you have to rotate um, the laser collimator round and round 360 so that your beam is uh, straight gives out a straight line basically that beam must be dead central all right and as you rotate it you don't want that beam to uh, osculate or rotate in a motion all right that would tell you um, if it's out collimation all right so I'm going to show you now the tools you're going to need to make a certain device for you to check in use conjunction with the laser collimator okay then these are uh, the things you're going to need uh, first off you're going to need to use some kind of whiteboard or you can just use a cardboard or something that you can uh, stick something on the wall all right uh, I'll explain why you need this all right um, also you're going to need a permanent marker or some kind of marking device all right which I will explain later on uh, also you're going to need a set of allen keys now some of these allen keys um, these collimation screws are really tiny and uh, I have found out that the that this collimator on the Antares one on this one on the Antares collimator is that the screws are imperial now one size I have found is 5 and 64 um, imperial size which basically it is that one okay so 5 64 um, basically fits uh, the, the screws on the on here now also I mentioned before you've got to prise these uh, little caps you might break the little plastic caps but they're just made out of rubber and they'll come out all right eventually just carefully make sure when you press them out use a little kind of screwdriver to prise them out you've got to take them off now you could in theory pierce a hole through there and stick your allen key in there but the main problem is because the tiny screws if you don't fit that allen key in properly what will happen is you'll start to round off the head and then you'll never get any adjustment at all so make sure you try and remove much of this horrible plastic coating off all right as possible now as i mentioned before this is a diy guide but this will take literally seconds to explain but basically what you're looking for is you need to uh, make some kind of device for you to mount uh, this laser collimator so to enable you to rotate it so you need to make some kind of form of a support or jig what I call them in engineering terminology is use a jig so you can do the uh, so you can support the laser collimator 
whilst you're checking the adjustment. Now, one thing I found really useful, and you can get a lot, lot from a lot of DIY shops, is get yourself uh, a, an angle, plastic angle. All right, you can get these from a lot of DIY shops. This plastic angle, all right, is is, um, is basically an inch by inch from corner to corner. All right, so that gives you an inch by inch uh, angle plate, like so. All right. Basically, what you're trying to do is cut this to a certain length, all right. And the ideal is um, you want to make something like that. Now, basically, this is 80 millimeter in length. So, basically, we're gonna have a look here. Close slope, 80 millimeter in length. And what you're doing is you it's four separate pieces, all right. Um, obviously, cut to the same length. And then what you do is you stick super glue at either side to make this cross pattern. So basically there's four sections there and then you have a jig. Right. And believe it or not, your this colour may will fit directly straight onto there. Like so. So and basically you can rotate it all the way around. Right, so to check the adjustment. Unfortunately. The, this uh, laser column here has a slight flaw, and the flaw is you've got this lip here. Now I don't know if you can see that, but you've got this lip. Now this lip is basically a slightly bigger diameter for you to slide uh, your laser column here so that it sits onto the your focuser tube flush, and that's the problem. And because it, it where it sits it it's not straight so and that gives you a clear indication that no matter how well you keep that supported you're gonna have it's not gonna work all right you're not gonna be able to check the, um, the collimation properly and even if you put it there you don't want it on the side because then again you're gonna uh, risk dropping it and it doesn't work so please when you make your uh, plate Always check the laser column and see if it has this uh, mated face, all right, this, this little piece that sticks out a bit. If it does, don't panic, because there is another alternative. And this one is what I designed. Here's one I made earlier. Now, this is the same piece, all right, but basically what I've done here is it's still 80 millimeter. In length so basically this is uh, one strip and then it's three se separate other strips all right they're cut in 20 millimeter all right in length so right so you've got basically three separate strips again all right and it forms this little cross pattern you do the same for the other side and basically again same process Use a bit of super glue, stick these crosses together, and it forms you this 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 uh, fantastic little jig. Alright, and then basically what this allows you to do is able to sit the laser collimator like so. Alright, and now you can rotate it level like so, and uh, you know, it, you can rotate it without any problems all right without that uh, that lip that uh, intimated face you being in the way so without that face being in the way you can rotate it without any problems all right and so make sure when you do make by uh, this angle plate all right uh, obviously it's made out of plastic so it's easy to cut so get the plastic ones you can make it out of wood or you can use metal if you wish. It doesn't really matter. The main purpose is as long as your angle from here to here, it doesn't have to be cut exactly, all right. But you know, the main purpose is make sure that this angle is straight as possible, all right. But usually this angle plate is quite well made anyway. But that's that's the um, the more important part, all right. You want that square so that you can rotate it freely and accurately so there you go there's my jig anyone can make one of these uh, cost doesn't take long it takes five, five minutes to make 
uh, cost wise for the material probably cost you about two or three pounds if that to make but once you've made it, it you've got a whole ready made jig straight away all right but it just depends on how you want to design your jig all right there are many ways and possibilities you can do but for me i found that this is probably the best one all right it's quite sturdy it's robust uh, it does the job but you must make this a rigid uh, material so what we're going to do now is we're going to check the uh, collimation on the laser okay what you see now is um, my laser is supported on this jig and it's projecting against uh, as I was talking about the material you're going to use this is projecting on a, uh, a whiteboard as you can clearly see you can see the the laser as it is all right uh, it doesn't really matter what sort of brightness you want all right as long as you can physically see the laser projecting on the screen all right now if it's a bit bright in your room switch off all your lights and you can do the check from there basically you're going to use a pen you know a marker and the, the circle on there you can do several ways usually you can use uh, blue tack to support it all right once you rotate it or do or put your finger firmly underneath the plate all right so it's nice firm grip all right and to rotate it you just simply just use your finger like so carefully to uh, project it on there all right so you rotate it carefully as as you're rotating it you then what you do is you get your pen now you can get give someone to give you a hand to do this which is usually better all right so as you wrote also get someone to mark the hole or you could do it yourself to mark the hole onto that laser pointer all right so basically what i'll do is i mark a hole do a little circle like so what we're going to do is now we're going to check by rotating that uh, that laser and what you're trying to achieve rotating that laser like so so that it needs to stay in that little circle I'll position that laser carefully Right, so a base of what I'm going to do is rotate it, and as you can see, already as I'm rotating it, it has moved straight out from the circle, like so. So that tells me that that laser column here is now out of collimation. So, as you see for yourself, it's not straight. So, what you do is like for any other uh, optical instrument you get yourself the 564 allen key or check what kind of allen key it is because not all Liz column is of this size all right but this one fits it and basically what you're going to do is you're going to adjust each of these screws all right each of these screws you know and what you're doing is you're doing it bit by bit and we're talking fractions of a turn all right and what you're trying to do is as you tighten one you you loosen the other tighten one loosen the other so you do it bit by bit so i tighten that one and i loosen that one all right and also what you're doing now you just adjust one of the screws like so only a little bit and then you recheck again go to the little circle little circle all right nice and easy Just rotate it oh automatically it's it's adjusted a bit but it's still at place so you need to keep adjusting the screws again so but the thing is you've got to take your time find out which screws do which 
and it's only like one eighth of a turn all right and you just keep adjusting it you have a loosen one screw and tighten up with the other all right so you're basically trying to get it square so we'll go back to the and again readjust it like so all right take, it will take time this will take time and you just adjust it again now if you make a mistake always go back readjust it again recheck all right because that caught on the lip so that's so readjust it again So I need to readjust that. So again, tighten up the screws bit by bit. One eighth of a turn. Readjust like so. And then rotate again. Now the adjustment's gone worse. So basically what I have to do is find out which screw that made it worse and I slacken it off and the adjustment has got a little bit better right like so so they say I'll readjust it one eighth of a turn readjust it again and you just keep doing that until you get this it's taken me five minutes to adjust the collar meter and at the moment after several attempts um, I decided to put it on a hard surface as you can see here I put a chipboard against the, the whiteboard all right so it's level and then recheck again obviously that was my mistake but I just wanted to show you guys that you need to have this on a nice flat level surface to be able to do this and after adjusting few of the screws also you loosen one uh, tighten up the other and just keep doing it in sequence we're now going to look at the red dot reticle here as I've marked and I'm going to slowly show you is rotate the laser collimator and this is what you're trying to achieve so I'm rotating the laser collimator as you can see now and it's remained in the dot. Firstly minute turns and there you have it. Now my laser is now fully collimated and that's what you're hoping to achieve. Now that's now collimated I can now check that on the uh, telescope and then I can adjust my uh, collimation now properly. Now you have got to check this periodically because the screws do come loose so it's very crucial that you recheck your laser collimator bef before you use it to collimate your optics. So I hope this guide has helped you guys and girls uh, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, thanks for watching and clear skies.